This is probably one of the most over the top and ridiculous mods I can do in a controller, but I am personally in love with it. And I want to show you how I did it. This is the Extreme Rate DTFS LED kit. Extreme Rate reached out to the channel and seeing as you guys spoke so highly of them, we talked about some ideas and landed on this as a video idea. And this is my trusty PS4 controller. It's the original one that came included with my PS4 Pro and seeing as I feel familiar enough with the insides of these things, we're going to be putting my own stuff at risk here. A quick prerequisite, uh, note that this RGB kit only works with the newer controllers. You can tell if yours is a newer one by the light right here, or just check to see if the model number matches mine. Alright, let's open her up and see what's inside. So the kit comes with a few things. We have the main wiring. Ooh, scary. A giant fold-out instruction guide. We won't be needing this. Clear joysticks, D-pad, buttons, and triggers. It also comes with a touchpad piece, but not too sure what this is useful for, but I guess we'll figure it out. It also comes with tools, but you know what we do with these. Why? Because that's why. Link in the description if you want to get yourself one of these. It's my favorite toolkit in the world. Alright, so we got four screws in the back of the controller we need to take off first. Next, we just apply some pressure on both ends until the whole thing starts to fall apart. Just like my last relationship. Fortunately for you, at least this can be put back together. Alright, don't pull too hard, there's still a wire plugged in. But thankfully it can be pulled out with very little effort. The battery is just held on by some double-sided tape. You can replace this battery with a bigger capacity battery too if you want. Link in the description. So this black bracket holds everything tightly together, and once we unplug the touchpad, the whole thing should just fall out. We'll get back to this later. Now. Let's get to the fun part, replacing the buttons. Please be cautious of where you're putting these buttons. I saw one guy accidentally confuse the circle and square buttons while installing these. Don't do that. Now this touchpad is strange. I didn't even know you could remove this. Okay, I got it. There's little hooks on the side. You just pull and lift and they just come off really easily. See, just like that. All right, now that that's done, let's get into the more intricate stuff. The joysticks just kind of pull off. As do the L1 and R1 triggers. 
The R2 and L2 triggers are a little bit weirder, however. I'm trying my best to show off how you're supposed to pull them off. All right, now for the wiring. This looks terrifying to be honest, but it starts making sense once you take a longer look at it. So there's this hole here, and that's going to make contact with something. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a nerd. And these contacts with the lighting know when you're pressing buttons on the controller. Why is that important? I'll show you later. Now the triggers. You put these on first before anything else, and then you just kind of fold them down until they sit flush. Again, I'm trying my best here for you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. All right, everything looks good so far. So we can start putting things back together again. Now the joystick lighting comes with adhesive on the bottom already. Be cautious of where the wiring lies. Test how it feels with the joysticks a few times just to make sure that you can click in all the way. Move it around, make sure that it just feels right because otherwise it can make moving in game really difficult. Looks like I'm gonna have to readjust, but that's fine. All right, oh, by the way, if this ends up happening to you where the vibration wiring accidentally gets ripped off from the board, don't worry. You just solder back on really quickly. See, no problem at all. All right, so it's time to start putting everything back together. So the touchpad wire needs to go through this hole right here. It's gonna take a few tries, so just be patient. If you have some, I've noticed that tweezers tend to help a lot. Make sure it's plugged in all the way in, and at this point I would check the front to make sure that everything looks good. And so far so good. And look, the little connector made it through. Oh, isn't that cute? By the way, look at all the buttons that are left over after this project. It's kind of neat. All right, we're almost done. One last step here. So surprisingly, none of this plastic is held in with any screws, only tape. It makes it really easy to just pull everything out. The charger port is held in with only one screw and it just pulls right out. This new charger port has a couple modifications on it, and most importantly, it provides a connection from the lights to the battery so it could all be powered seamlessly.
So the thin line is going to go to this little slot right here. I had a bit of trouble plugging this in because it just kept moving around. I recommend some double-sided tape if you have it. It makes it way easier to plug this thing in. And the bigger cable goes to where the charging port was originally connected. I'm going to put in the bracket at this point. Now, these last two wires is what brings this whole project to life. The one on the left goes to the battery port. And the one on the right goes to the battery. Nice. Now we just put it back in place and we can finally close everything back up. Just make sure that no wires get caught in between the seams while you're closing it up. Make sure everything feels right, and then you can close it up. Now, admittedly this mod already looked great, but looking at it in the middle of the day, I just don't feel it does it any justice, so let's come back at night and see how it looks. Okay, it's a little later in the day now, and man, this thing is just so pretty in the nighttime. I love the way it looks. I was playing around with it a little bit, and I think I figured out how this whole thing works, so let me go ahead and show you. So turning on the controller immediately switches on all the lights, Funnily enough, if you press the PlayStation button lightly enough, the lights will flash on, but the PS4 won't turn on. Isn't that weird? Changing the colors is super simple. You just hold L1 and square for like three or four seconds until you see the D-pad flashing. That'll let you know you're in color changing mode. Then you just tap right on the D-pad to cycle through what colors you want. You, know, you got like cyan, you got like red, you got magenta, all that stuff. It also has a gradient mode that just cycles through all the colors. Uh, blinking mode, I I don't know why you would want this, <laughs> or if you just hate fun, you can just turn it off completely. Then once you pick your color for the d-pad, you just tap L1 and square to go to the next area. Then you pick out your color, then you just repeat that around the entire controller till you get something you like. Get creative with it, you know, get a theme going. Once you're done, you can just do the L1 and square thing again for a few more seconds, and your controller's ready to go. Now, while I like the idea of being able to cycle through the colors, something just feels off about not being able to cycle back. Once you pass a color, you gotta cycle all the way through until you get back to the color that you want. Lastly, I'm not a super big fan of the action buttons. The design is fine, I guess, but I just feel it would've been cooler if it was just, you know, the actual buttons. I don't, I don't know. Do you guys prefer the design on the buttons, or am I just crazy? Let me know. Anyways, there it is. Another project all done. Well, not perfect, I am really happy with the finished product. The colors look slick, and in terms of battery life, I am seeing a dip, but it's not as much as I expected. I'm getting about four to five hours with it before I have to charge it up again. This is a super neat project, and it's good for an afternoon's worth of fun. It's just nice to have a super unique look to your controller that you know that no one else has. This is definitely going to be something that I'm going to be proud of showing off when I have friends over. I'm going to have a link to where you can buy this mod kit down in the description if you're interested. And let me know what you think about the mod kit. Do you love it? Did you hate it? Did you watch the entirety of this video with absolutely zero intention of actually doing this yourself? <laughs> uh, let me know. Consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the video, and I'm going to have some other videos right here if you want to check them out. And thank you for watching.